You're on. Do you want to talk to us a little bit about why you're over budget? We trained a new secretary and a new treasurer mm -hmm. and put them on the payroll while they were being trained. Did they attend the meetings? And this is what caused the increase. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it was necessary for no reason. That's not an easy position to refill, really. I say congratulations on finding somebody. Yeah. You guys, you have a very small district to draw from. Anybody have any questions? Comments? Um, so the income is up by. Um, about 10 percent, about uh, four thousand dollars. Is that just more usage, or yeah, what? What? Basically, well, I was looking charges for service on page. Worthy end you here with the proposal on this. Is it not? Is that another? Four thousand one hundred ninety-two dollars.
customers aren't using as much as we hope. Well, Volume is down. Mainly due to White Rock and Gaslight Village have revamped their whole system, sewer and water. And along with that, they've lost all of their leaks and their volume is right now. So we have to work with that. That many leaks. That's amazing. Oh, yes. Yes. We went from uh, 20,000 gallons a day down to about 17,000. That's quite a percentage. It's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. And financially, it's a lot, too. Yeah. Yeah. So we're working with that. Why did we go over on office supplies? Uh, no computer. Yeah. It was necessary. Chemicals, it depends on when we order them and uh, how far ahead we are on them. Because we, a purchase will carry us six, seven, eight months. So we just had to purchase them all at so, once? Yes. We try to get the volume to get the price down. And there is different companies and we look for the best price. And the utilities were over too, right? Uh, we over 1,090. Yes. Do you know what the reason is for that? Going rates. Going up. We have no control over that. It doesn't. It's a village district.
can't do all of them. Chris Kane has a great take. Thank you, Paul. Paul, I, is there a sign in form, I think, um, that I don't know whether, yeah. Marina, do you have a sign in form, Marina? No, I don't. Any luck on finding somebody to be on the budget committee or from the village district? Joe was on it. Yeah, he yeah, can't be there. He can't be there. No. In the event that he's going to run again for selection. He's running again, yeah. Uh, if, if he doesn't get it, he'll jump back on it. Other than that, we will have to appoint somebody to find somebody. Okay. Here we can do it now. If somebody's not here, we can. That's tough. I'd rather really have them volunteer. Yeah. Wednesday night's my bad night. <laughs> we know that. Or I know that. We know that. John knows that. Yeah. But we know, we know the situation. Yeah. Okay. So you'll let us know as soon as yes. it's resolved. I'm with you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear James. Happy birthday to you. How old are you now? <laughs> 133, but I'm well preserved. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Uh, I'm, I'm so glad I'm going to um, so we have two, two unfinished businesses. It's voting on the sewer commission and the Lockmore, Lockmore Village Water District budget. Um, on the sewer commission, did everybody get the information that was sent out by Marina? Yeah. Tim, that was expense. Yeah, all the expenses. Like the QuickBooks, and then an mm -hmm. email with the uh, thank you comments. Oh, those. Yeah. So yeah, I had to see those. Yeah. Okay. Well, so I'm just all these guys' numbers there. now, because I've got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I did see oh. those. Yeah. All right. I'm going to make a motion to accept the sewer commission's budget, which is a level funded budget, for five hundred eight thousand five hundred thirty three dollars. Second. All right, discussion? Thank you. I think I read the wrong line. <laughs> no, it's fine. Oh, okay. Got it. Discussion? Well, well my only thing is, Lockmore water doesn't come through, but sewer comes through here. I don't understand the <coughs> budget. But we can make changes Lockmere is a district. Right. The budget, but they have to get our approval, They're, but it doesn't go on our budget. We have to, we have to get our, we have, we have to sign what they approve for it to go to the state. Division of all revenue. But they're a, they're a district in themselves. Okay. The sewer district is a commission. Is that correct? Yes. Which means it's the entire town, as opposed to the district of those who serve. Right. Discussion? No? You know, yeah, could you explain the pass-through budget? Because I, I don't know if that's an actual term. That's kind of a coin term that we say, and it seems like it just... It I didn't find anything on the words pass-through, but... You look at it. It's just a term that's been used, that's all. 
term yeah. that's been used. And it's been used by the Sewer Commission, you want to explain, Peter? That we have no, nothing to say about how it's performed or whatever? I'll defer it to uh, Commissioner Dawson. <laughs> <laughs> so the difference is your budget that you're preparing, those monies are raised by taxation. The Sewer Commission is fees, and the Village District is fee-based. What's the only difference? So it's supposed to be self-supporting, I guess? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. so the monies are not raised by taxation. Right. The, They're user, except user for those fees. two, your entire budget is raised by, by taxation. taxation. Yeah, right. It's right. property taxes. The sewer commission's budget is only fees, and the laws are completely different. They govern how those money is spent, where they're held, <coughs> than the um, budget you're preparing basically for the selectmen. So, it, and additionally, the only thing raised through taxation for sewer is any new con or any construction project that we don't have enough money to fund. That goes through town vote because it's the town is doing the bond. Right. Right, but that's not part of our budget. No, no. But that's, that's, that's where it that, would be that, that's tax, bond that, that would be added. property tax driven, not you yep. need a co-signer basically. Right? Well, it's usually <laughs> prepared by the board of selectmen. The bond, all bonding, yeah. finance officer. Here yeah. we go. Cam, did you have a comment? Yeah. No, I was just going to, uh, much the same answer as what uh, Selectman Dawson gave. Yep. John, any other questions? Yeah, so um, it, it gets a little confusing because, you know, as the budget committee and us accepting it and us representing those people who voted for us to be reviewing these things. Um, why is it that if we have to review it, that we just pass it through and sign it? Well, you don't technically have to just pass it through. You can ask all the questions you want to or understand how it works. But the difference is, if you, let's say you unfunded by, let's say 30%, just randomly, um, the sewer commissioners can raise their fees. Where if you did that with mm -hmm. the regular budget, the selectmen can't raise the taxes. They can't change that. Do you see the difference? Um, I do. You know, it, it's a user-based fee, right? Right. Versus a taxation. Right. Which, in, again, the laws are completely different on how those monies are raised and spent and what they're spent on, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So. The budget committee can ask all the questions they want and should because you should understand how that part of your town government works. So you can question the spending. Do you have a public hearing on your budget? No. That's why, we're doing that's why we do it here. here. Yeah, that's if what we, I was going to say. We could choose yeah. to separate from the town, I believe. I said, why not? Because we're a commission, we are part of the town. And Chapter 32 in the budget law specifically states that the sewer commission's budget is part of the budget committee's budget, hence the reason it has to be part of your budget for the public hearing, just like the village district budget. Right. So, it affects, so the parks commission is similar. Well, no, the park commissioners is all raised by taxation. No, I know, but, but it's still the, a separate entity. Um, no. The commission. It's still part of the, it's part, yeah, that's no, part of the selectmen's budget. Right, right. Once right. voted on, when it comes to the selectmen, the selectmen could take all the money out of that budget and put it someplace else if they so choose. <laughs> they never do, but they can. <laughs> the sewer commission um, budget, again, is different, and I lost that. I think, the way, <laughs> I think the way you explained it in terms of your revenues come from rates that you charge for the users and uh, and everything else comes from taxation i think that's a very good explanation and explains it to me and thank you you jogged my memory so the other part of why it's part of your budget is because the revenues we, we raise is part of the revenues that is i keep pointing you to he is there it's part of the revenues that are reported to irs for the town that explain it john it is odd. It's, 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 it's
talk to the DRA if you have any questions like that, because they can explain it much better than I can. It's, it's the same thing I think I mentioned to you when you do the state budget, banking and insurance are effectively the pastor because every, they, they're self-sustained by the fees and the fines that they charge. And so, like with the banking, it's overseen by the banking commission or is it our RSAs? No, the sewer is overseen by our public utilities? No, no. 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 The sewer commission. commissioners. So who oversees, let, let's say, I, I mean, you guys, you vote on that's doing a no, great no, job, but let's say you had a rogue bunch of sewer oh, commissioners, a rogue bunch of sewer oh, commissioners. You'd have to vote us out. Then the voters would let them vote them out. You got, that's the only way right now. Unless we violate the laws, you can get us thrown out. But other right. than that, it'd be a vote out. The sewer commission so, is another set of governing, is another governing body within the town. So technically... The, the budget committee should review the numbers and should look at them, not just pass through, to make sure that they, they, as representing the voters, that they would bring to light anything that they seemed or question it at the time, like here tonight, yeah. anything that they see is wrong, so that it is brought forward. It's almost like auditors. So, so it, I agree with you. I think it's yeah. important that the budget committee understand that budget and how the monies are raised and where they're spent and why they're spent. Well, we're a recommendation body, so we need to understand everything. And if they don't have a public meeting, we we do that for them. Is the sewer public though every week or every month? You guys have it? We have a meeting. They have a meeting. It's public, but, the, but they don't have a public chapter hearing. Chapter 32, the budget law requires the budget committee to have a public hearing on their budget, which includes the sewer commissioner's budget. Hence, this is where the public hearing takes place. Okay, thank you, Ken. So, You're welcome. Christine, you have a question. So, if we went over the budget and it comes from the town, will that affect our tax rate? Or does that, I mean, because that's a big, would be a big expense. It doesn't There's affect some, the tax rate. No, they, they, everything's raised by fees. No, but if, like you said, if something, if they're over the budget, they have to come to the town. Well, they come no, to the town. Just a bond. Just a bond. Oh, that's it? Mm -hmm. Just yeah, well, oh, If we're okay. doing okay. Well, they're so investigating a new project, uh, okay. we've got aging infrastructure. We're trying to do it right. annually without having to go bond route which is uh, why we try to stay level funded. Mm -hmm. The problem is we don't know what's going to break, so we hope we're good. That's why they have the reserve account. Yeah. So if, um, and their reserve account is larger than a lot because of the so project. That, saying, yeah. Well, also we the have. aging infrastructure, yeah. this whole downtown area. Yeah, we know. All right. So if the downtown area had to be completely redone, that would be solely borne by the ratepayers and not by any taxpayers. Uh, it would be paid by taxpayers. If the entire area <coughs> failed at once, that would definitely be a bond. Yeah. And paid oh, by, yeah, by who would pay for that? Probably, probably the double the digits. Owners. All the users. The, the property owners. The whole town. Taxpayers that do not have sewer. Oh, okay. Over 10 million. <coughs> that would go to downtown. By the town. Okay. That's why we keep the, the surplus. And we've so, already had three areas in the downtown that we've repaired with the fee money. So I, and I see you guys have a, a, a surplus building up so that you can cover for these things. That's right. But had you had not been doing it, and the budget committee would be responsible to say, hey, you're not saving up, because if you're not saving up and something goes wrong, it will cost the taxpayers. So that's one of the reasons mm -hmm. why we need to look at the sewer budget make sure that the burden doesn't get passed on to the taxpayers and is being properly managed. Right. So and and, we, and we, if we question, I think anyway, in the past there are times that we questioned that because we didn't know that's why it was being saved. We said, why do you have all this money and you're not using it? That's the war chest. And in fact, that was not the case. We were saving it in case something did happen that was catastrophic. None of us have vacationed in Bimini. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not quite Bimini. It's yeah. warm, though. I saw uh, Peter in that bikini, I'm wondering. <laughs> Since 96, I think we've raised rates twice. But, 
I, th I think my point is, is to make sure that yeah. everybody has a budget yeah. committee. If you have questions on some of the repairs and stuff, feel free to ask. And us. that everybody has budget committee and the residents should go and make sure that, Everything lined that up. everything's lined up, that there is sufficient funds to operate it in case of disaster. And if not, at this time would be when the budget committee would step forward and say, hey, you need to raise rates or do something because the ratepayers aren't safe enough to take care of their infrastructure. Yeah. That's and a good conversation. So it's it is like that out. So we don't yeah. just mm -hmm. consider as, and that's why I think the pass through thing could be not, not um, well, it may be a misnomer. Used, but yeah, it might be misunderstood in a way that you don't have to look at it. That's 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 the commission budget. Thanks. Yeah. For Thank you, Ken. My time. <laughs> All right, any other questions? All right, I'm going to make, I made a motion. We discussed it. Call the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. So that passes. The next thing is um, we've signed and reviewed the Washington Water District. I'll make a motion to accept that. There's a second. Second. Any discussion? All in um, favor? No, I just, uh, one thing I just wanted to say is, look, I don't know, we just, did we change, did he change anything for like the, like the electricity usage, or is it just next year going to go over by the Well, rates do increase, well, rates our, own, our own personal electricity goes up every year. <laughs> If, if you've already signed the MS-737, it's kind of a moot point. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So, 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 I didn't even see it in the tender. Last two pages, though. Down to the bottom. Yeah. 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 Well, the, the audit or? On the 
concrete fences, the operating levels. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The revenue included is anticipated for the prosecutorial prosecutorial revenue from the city of Franklin. And the total projected revenue is $27,896,000. And the expenses did not include wages for the work performed. And that was $23,203 in wages over six and a half months. The employer cost was the $4,694. So what that means is the prosecutor for Franklin was uh, arrested and... <laughs> Hmm? And so we covered for them, and there were costs and wages. Oh, okay. So uh, there were some, <coughs> there were some monies that were uh, in the budget for uh, wages, but it wasn't sufficient to cover it. So there's a difference of sixteen thousand two hundred and forty-five dollars. So I would recommend in revenue or expense. In expense. So you're adding that to the... So, right. So, that's correct. So, you're, uh, if you were to add that in, uh, you're, where it says total operating budget, uh, where it shows on your page 5625286 yeah. it would now show 5641531 which is an increase of $16,245. What would that be the percentage from point? Um, Still down or up now? Uh, I can give that to you in a second. So we're lending them our prosecutor, and yeah. we're sucking up the fees, or are they going to reimburse us? They reimburse. They reimburse. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we don't have that right now. It's in the revenue. Okay. It is in the revenue. Oh, okay. It's already happening. What was that total, so, level, total level? The total number is five million. Five million, uh, oh. five million six hundred forty-one thousand five hundred thirty-one. Okay. <coughs> so, total operating budget. so to answer uh, Christine's question, it's a decrease on the total operating budget line of five hundred and seventy dollars over the twenty eighteen budget, or point one percent.
much what they gave us the first time. Yeah. Not the second. Well, that's. So what was the second though? Yeah. I don't know. That was something Jeannie had. I don't know. That's what they provided me. For yeah. This we already have this. Okay. Yeah. some numbers in there to there present to the public budget for the hearing. We had to have something in there to, to post for what we're going to be talking about. And uh, we, we couldn't come up with a number. We, well, it's still, uh, the only number we could be... We, we argued and argued about it for hours, so why are we... Exactly. We're so that time, we, we just sat there... We just said, and I, I believe it probably is in the manual, but we decided, I made the motion, We'll just split it in half. So let's get a number in there so we can have the public hearing exactly. and so we can look into it and get the more information. And well, then we got the same information we originally got, so we didn't get anything more. So they sent us basically a fake information trying to win us over, and then that's what they did, and then we got this other stuff. I just think it's kind of not the shame. Well, this thing is the first one. I don't think it's fake. Right. I think that's inaccurate. That's very inaccurate. inaccurate. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah, help their yeah, but that's what they're talking. That's not. What that's we're not for the original. That's, that's, the that's something original. that's completely different the than what they 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 So if they have that, I want to see that for every house. They didn't bring that. Because they don't. They don't. They're not doing apples for apples. Caster. Caster. Okay. I mean, not, and everybody else is paying half of the plate. Yeah, my issue is the reason. Actually, Franklin is paying more than what they have. Yeah, I'm good with the 13, but because I feel that's fair, unless somebody can show me that all the towns were getting much more than all the other towns, which I haven't seen yet. And we're right now paying four times any other town. I think um, they might save the money that we cut by saving, by having Franklin giving them um, in-kind contributions, which will they save are. them that much money no. if they hey. lose from what we're not giving them. Franklin is giving them more than we're giving them. Well, what I'm saying is that if we giving. cut 13, then they will save that much by what Franklin is giving them in time. It just doesn't make and sense. And then it will also be more appropriate for the services that they get from Franklin, which is Eight times more than what we get. Franklin is pay, right now. Franklin is paying thirty-six thousand. If you look at what they're giving in kind and the amount of money, the cash that they're giving right. them, and they that's thirty-six thousand. And they 000. were paying seven thousand before. So no, that much no, no. money. No, the seven thousand is cash. Is cash. Twenty. The, the twenty-six thousand is in kind. And so that, it's a total right. of but and before that, but that, but that twenty-six thousand that they're getting in kind is probably saving them thirteen thousand in cash, which is a difference from. What, I, I'm not sure why it's saving. Because they're not paying well, they're not well, because they're not paying for the gas or whatever the what they need to it's run the, the operation. It's the building, I believe. That they're, yeah, All right, so they must have had thirteen thousand yeah. in expenses when running that business in that building. I don't really know. I'm just assuming that they paid some kind of cash outlay for running the, 
in the building they were. And now they're not, they don't have those expenses now. So I don't feel, to me, I'm not sure, because I don't have the um, figures, but they must be saving <coughs> cash money that we are eliminating because it's not really equitable for us. Because getting, we're getting less services to start in the no, I, I no. That's that was my issue. That I, I mean, if, if we're they can bring me figures that show how we rate with all the other towns that we're not paying four times as much as any other town, then it would seem that I, I would understand it. But I haven't seen that yet. I mean, they came in with that other sheet for just Tilton. I'd like to see that for all the other towns too, and then I would understand if we're actually paying. We're actually receiving five hundred thousand instead of two hundred thousand. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, I understand what you're saying. I don't think you're understanding what what's happening. I have to look at the chair to recognize. It. Okay. Um, the only other thing is that bringing up the town meeting to restore the money. I mean, that's up. You know, I just think this is equitable. I think the uh, yeah, sure. Is really a town meeting because I think everyone should know that we're paying four times as much than everybody out there on the town. It's a good conversation, I think, for the town people to have. So I think if they have an issue, we're going to raise it back up at town meeting and let the voters decide there. I think you have questions in the audience. Sure. Yeah. Yes, I'd like to say something. You know, the people in the town of Tilton, uh, especially the elected officials, really should be concerned with what is in the best interest of the town of Tilton. Not what's in the best interest of Franklin or anybody else. We have a youth assistance program that Sanderton doesn't pay for, and yet the youth assistance program works for this time. We have a community action program with Franklin Visiting Nurses are two very core programs to our existence here in the town of Tilton. We have over 75 different programs that community action here deliver every single day to our community to the most vulnerable people in our town. Disabled, mentally ill, uh, less fortunate, seniors, everybody. Fuel assistance, you name it. It's not a question of, um, you. the budget committee brought up an inequity. We brought that to the director of Beth Haywood. Uh, we brought that to their attention. We met with Beth Haywood two weeks ago, three weeks ago, mm -hmm. um, and pointed that out. Their immediate response was, we will straighten this out. This will be no problem. We will get on it today. We will start working on this. We will meet with you in a couple of months to let you know and give you an update on how this works out. We see what you're say seeing. We will work it out. We ask that you not cut our funding because our funding, if you cut it, <coughs> we can see cutting it a little bit, but if you cut it to a certain degree, it will cut staff, not services. And if you cut staff, you're not going to get services. And that's where you're at a detriment. So think about this. If you cut staff and people go for fuel assistance and people go for electricity assistance and people go for food commodities and the people down Franklin, New Franklin apartments when they live off of $60 a month after they've paid their rent and their medical bills and they live off of a block of cheese for a month and, and a pound of butter, they can't get there because there's no staff to allow them to get there because you've cut the services. That's what it's going to come to. Not because you're going to cut the program. The program is still going to exist, but there's not going to be any staff to do that. We, we point blank ask them what would happen if we cut the budget. Now, they asked for $26,000. We, we cut them $20,000. We thought that was a reasonable amount to get, you know, just to get their attention and say, okay, you're working on it, let's do it, we're not gonna, we're not gonna fund it. We've had other outside agencies in the past where we found an inequity that we didn't, right in the middle of the budget season, cut them so that they're non-functioning. Not, in the past years, 10 years as a selectman, there have been two very poor 
programs in our town that this town cannot survive without, and that's Visiting Nurse Association and Community Action Program. We all, every single person in this room, has a family member, has somebody touched by them every single day. I think it's unconscionable to keep, to cut them down to $13,000. You want to cut them? Cut them. Don't cut them down so that they're going to absolutely cut the, the services. We have $405,000. They have pointed it out service by service by service. What each service got brought back to the town of Tilton. Our $26,000, excuse me, I'm talking. Our $26,000 last year brought in services rendered to the town of Tilton, $405,000. We can't overlook this. Thank you, we cannot overlook this. I'm still talking until the chair tells me questions. to shut up. Okay. I think that's really rude. <coughs> now you can see that I have passion because I have been out there in the trenches with these people. I have visited seniors with Meals on Wheels. We have had instances where the Meals on Wheels are their only lifeline to having any type. We've had emergencies where people, the Meals on Wheels, have had to call 911 because they've delivered the meal and they've talked, they have seen the seniors, all the people that they deliver Meals on Wheels to have fallen on the floor and have called 911 for help. Do we want to cut these services out? Another question. When we do cut these services out, are you going to end up adding something to the welfare budget? Because that's where it's going to end up with. Thank you. I'm done. Peter, you your hand. Yep. Bill, I would suggest the <coughs> budget committee ask Kat for some audited numbers so that we can talk apples to apples. Because I based the spreadsheet on what was first said, where we were paying 26 out of the 52,000. We cut it 13,000, that's fine, but I, if I recall correctly, I misplaced the sheet, they get 450-ish in federal funding, which brings them up to like a half a million. So we're talking 13,000 out of a half million dollar budget there. Um, so I think it's not that drastic, and I'll yield back to the chair. All right, we have a motion on the bill. I just, um, what is their total operating budget? You've got the paper. Uh, I don't have it. That's not it. We, we have it. We've got it. I've got it in my book. I don't have my book. We have it in our budget book. Okay. You've so got what it is budget. the percentage that 13000 affects on their total budget? We have to also understand, too, Franklin is Merrimack County, which is almost three times the size of Belknap County. It's at it, it least double in size because 400 square, 400 square miles is, is Belknap County and over 900 square miles is, Frank, is uh, Merrimack County. Severely hurt 
that people who can't go out and drive anywhere, can't get any more money, can't borrow against anything or, or supply for themselves, and their only recourse, oh, I do not, no, 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 okay, no, no, I'm just going to no, I'll be less than a minute. And we're going to hurt the most vulnerable people in our community, and in turn, the only thing that they have left to do, if they don't get this assistance, if the government that CAP provides through other funds, they're going to come to the welfare office, and we will have to, have to, by law, write a check out for their full fuel for the winter or their all that and this will go all the way up to next year which includes the fuel assistance program for 2020's fuel heating season so cut it some but let's pull them to the line get it straight next budget season not this one so we're not hurting the people who can't have anything else we beat that to death that's our but we beat that to death like last week we do wait and bill and Okay. I have to be recognized like everybody. So you must know the percentage that they're going to lose by losing 13. Uh, so on, their, on their operating budget, what is the percentage that they're losing? I know that that comes out. No, I want to know what the percentage is. I, I, I'd have to do You have to do that because that part of our budget process is to understand those figures. I mean, we can pass Phoenix around, but we need to know the numbers. I understand that you're, I, I, understand, I love CAP. I see how it works great. I'm just asking you for, you know, my job is to understand the numbers. Good and I'm not getting it. Good thing is working on So this is where I'm going back to what we talked about last time and last time. I understand they do great things for the community, no doubt. But the only reason why we keep saying to give this money is because we keep giving it to them. And the reason why we're trying to give it to them now is because they've been getting it so much. But at the end of the day, we don't know their operating budget. We don't know how much this is really affecting them. And it's, they, they say- They presented that, all of that to us when we came. They, and I don't have, have the percentage. Christine has the percentage. I'm just trying to make sure that people who are depending on very crucial services aren't all the same. I'm thinking federal, federal funding as well, though. 66% is federal. How much? 66% is paid by federal. If we take half the budget away, they lose 23.423%. What's the federal number? Huh? What's the federal contribution? 96,812. Because in my booklet on the submittal they did in the fall, I thought it was like 450 and 50 was uh, in the communities. The town Does someone have that book? Full 34% of the entire budget. No, but we're almost in time. Uh, we've got a motion on the floor. Any other discussion? Yeah, I actually do, because I still think, even though I get I get why we don't want to shock the system, I completely get that, a reason with that, but for us, I feel like it's still, I understand that the services might get affected, but at the same time is that they're still getting more, they're not having the building anymore. They've had other changes that are saving them money, and it just doesn't feel right for us. We're paying so much more than everybody else, just in general. So you're saying their entire operating budget no, the Third? town share is 23%. Of I'm people. talking about the entire operating budget. The entire operating budget? You want to know the 13,000? Right. Percent? How much is that affecting the entire operating budget? That was the question. Well, let's do this, and then I'm going to call the button. On the entire budget, it's 8.5%. Call the question. Motion on the floor for $20,000 for cash. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Carried. Um, the next thing I want to bring up is that we have minutes from. Can we have one conversation? We have minutes from last week. And, um, I'm going to request that we wait until our next meeting to review those minutes uh, because um, there was a problem getting them. I, what Marina did is she typed them in and all of a sudden they disappeared so, from her computer. So yes. she kind of three things together. I just want to wait. She has nothing to go through. Sure. So I'd like to make a motion to wait one next meeting. Second. 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 Second.
Madam Chair, you need to open your. Uh, okay. Okay. Well, Madam Chair, I'm going to ask you to open your uh, agenda for the next meeting. Okay. Well, I'm going to open the public hearing now, and um, we need to go over the warrant articles. Jason. Okay. That was it. That was just. Police Department Building Committee. Would you like to see the warrant article in effect, and would you like to make a presentation? So it's just come up. Good evening, Madam Chair and members of the Budget Committee. Uh, my name is Kevin Washington, and I'm the chair of the Fulton uh, Police Station Building Committee. If you'd allow me about two and a half minutes so I can set a PowerPoint presentation. In the meantime, there's a birthday cake over there. <laughs> so oh, it was my birthday. <laughs> So there's a birthday cake over there. Please go feel free. I'm starting my next 75 now. <laughs> 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 That's Tom. Oh. Jane saying hi. Hi, Jane. <laughs> I, I said a couple of seconds. I did. I, I know. Yep. Marina, I did. You want to pass the sign in around for the sign? Please. Thank you. 
So, so this was never on for sale? This, it, well, this, this property was never on for sale. Like I said, we approached them uh, because we feel it is an extremely viable piece of property. Uh, and and I, I'll, you'll see this number again, you'll hear it. We looked at 173 properties from stem to stern, from City Line and Franklin uh, to the Winneswam Bridge. And we had a lot of deep, healthy discussion, heated discussions about uh, what, were, what was good property. And this is what we boiled it down to. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but uh, we'll, we'll cover those details. That's an unbelievable price, too. Well, we think it is. Yeah. Um, we haven't really heard any different. It's, uh, you know, we, we sat with our fingers crossed, toes crossed, chewing our fingernails for about you know, three or four weeks waiting to hear what it was going to come in at, just thinking that exit 20 property. And knowing what we had done with other properties in town, uh, that it was going to be uh, far more than, than this. So um, this, this, this committee is extremely excited about what we've been uh, offered. Uh, so, so here you go. Um, this is exactly what we're talking about here. We've got Sanborn Road. Jay Jill is over here across the street. Uh, I still call it Tilton Sand Gravel. But, um, and we've got the hedgerow of pine trees, uh, the cemetery. Uh, the football field, you can see the goal post and envision the, the, uh, the ice skating rink here. This is the parking lot uh, for the Tanger Outlets that enters, that has a curb cut, uh, and we've all driven through there, I'm sure, uh, out on to Route 132. Um, so, it, some of the, while I have this slide up, I think it's important to note that a lot of the discussion that we've had uh, through all the properties that we looked at is what utility hookups did we have av available, and what was the estimated cost going to be to enter onto those properties? And the with concern for us here was the fact that where is municipal water? Because we had already learned that it was extremely expensive uh, to hook up to that. And this is a fire hydrant that's in that area, uh, generally speaking. And we are on the what we're classifying as the right side, the, or the correct side, the cheapest side of the water, for the water connection. Um, so that was another one that we were uh, crossing our fingers on and we learned that uh, we're all set there. Isn't there a well there? There is a well that is there and it's, uh, I believe, someone can correct me, but it's used to, spread to uh, water the lawn. Non-potable. Okay. Well, it's never been tested to be That's potable. Right. It was never intended to be potable water. It was, it was not tested to be potable. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's a win-win. You know, we talked about, oh, wow, that's great. We've got non-potable water there in a well. We can use that to water the lawn, and we can use the municipal water uh, for potential uh, fire suppression system. Um, what's our timeline? Uh, that, that's, a, uh, that's been the controversy uh, all, I shouldn't say controversy is not the right word for that. That's been the pressure that we've had on us since 2017, October of 2017. You know, we came into the town meeting last year uh, expecting to present something, uh, but we were not ready for that, and all we did was give an update. So um, the, the big timeline on this is that, that most folks that have been in town uh, for, for a while will remember back, this, this all started uh, pre-2006, when the, when the community started to have these discussions. It was presented through PowerPoint presentations and uh, discussions and votes uh, we, we purchased property, we purchased a building and property, and it was agreed that we needed a police station if, uh, by majority vote. Uh, in 2017, we were asked by the Board of Selectmen, we were, this committee was convened by the Board of Selectmen to uh, look at this again and uh, move forward with evaluating uh, property for a police station building. Our initial task was just that, to look at the property to see where uh, a build which would be most viable uh, for a police facility. Uh, we, uh, we've chosen not to uh, present the volumes of um, studies that are out there that have been done in committees, um, unless someone tells us otherwise. All of those are available online. We reviewed a lot of that work because we feel that those committees since 2006 um, have done a yeoman's job in collecting data and making critical decisions that brings us here tonight. 2017-2018, um, this committee is focused on the fact that we have not replaced the police facility. Um, and uh, we, we want to move forward with that. Uh, we have been moving forward with that. 2017 warrant uh, was for $30,000 um, thereabouts. 
and uh, that was to continue uh, to work on this um, study. It was used for uh, some of the architectural um, uh, design work to consult with Mr. Goudreau. Um, and uh, we, we had other properties that we looked at uh, that monies was spent uh, to do test boring uh, at lot six and lot um, 15 on Business Park Drive. Um, that money is uh, almost all gone. I think there's $1,500 left in that line about, Tim. Uh, approximately. Yeah, we're, so we're in the vicinity of about $1,500 left out of that $30,000. Uh, our first four meetings, um, I just want to make sure I'm not, uh, so our first four meetings, um, we, we looked at the viability of Business Park Drive, um, and it was found to not be viable. Uh, we, we obviously know that we sold 61 Business Park Drive. Uh, it's a thriving business now. They, they've actually grown and they've per since purchased Lot 6 from us and, and bringing um, tax dollars on to the tax roll. Do you have a question? No. Okay, sorry. Uh, you thought I was going to leave that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we, we know that what's happened with that. We, we looked extensively. We went to the property. We spent the whole uh, a night up there on Business Park Drive, we looked at Lot 15, and uh, we walked around it and around it, and we walked up the hills and down the hills. We talked to Gary Goudreau about placement of buildings, and in the end, we really felt that we were handcuffed um, to uh, to that Lot 15, uh, just for the fact of Lot 6 wasn't quite big enough. There was um, at the time there was some question of whether the abutter uh, wanted to buy that, so. Uh, we had one meeting here, and we talked about, um, we didn't let, it was alarming on what the cost was with the utilities at Business Park Drive. Uh, to connect to the water and, and the sewer, the sewer not as much, obviously, but the water we know is extremely expensive. And it was voted unanimously to move on. We needed to do something different, or we were going to be stalled. So that's when we began evaluating 173 properties. We had two workshop sessions here in this room. And uh, we're proud to say that we narrowed it down to uh, three properties. And our number one property was the uh, Archdiocese property. And uh, there was a lot of question of whether we were going to strike out with that. They told us to be patient. It looked promising. And um, here we are. So 2019 um, really was where the final negotiations <coughs> lied with the Board of Selectmen and the Archdiocese. The Archdiocese slipped in 2018 and put it in the newsletter. And luckily, you know, they were able to, to keep it somewhat uh, low key until it was finally negotiated. Um, so this year, we want to make it very clear that in 2019 at the town meeting, all we are asking for, and you'll see it in the warrant, is the land. There's uh, some misnomer out there, some rumor and innuendo about um, we want to build the building this year. No, we do not. We're not prepared to do that. Um, we're just not ready. Uh, so we're also looking in the, the second warrant is for architectural and engineering. And uh, then we can move forward. And in 2020, there will be a request uh, to build a new police facility. Uh, we talked about 615 and the, the cost of utilities. And uh, it just, it's, it's not viable. Uh, the other thing with those uh, particular lots and that, that drive that we looked at up there, it's just uh, the visibility um, and the access. Uh, we, this committee was not uh, was not comfortable with that, and we felt we could do better. Um, the previous committees had been working on conceptual designs with Gary Goudreau, so we do have um, a, a rough footprint of a building or buildings that we've been working with, um, single story and two story. Uh, this committee is not interested in a two-story building uh, at the current lot that we're looking at or the, that we're negotiating uh, and hoping to buy. Uh, the only thing uh, that we looked at for two-story was that lot 15. So um, I'm going to move on from that. We just that we spent extensive amount of time away from that. I believe that you have this is the exact uh, verbatim of the warrant. I certainly could read it if you wish, but I believe you have it in front of you. Get anything so far? Mm -hmm. Typo conceptual. Oh, okay. Which, that's 
why we're here, man. I do. That's why you are here. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Since this is not appropriated, I'm assuming you don't have a purchase and sale agreement, or do you have one that's contingent on? That's exactly what we have. We have a purchase and sales that is contingent upon the vote. So it's fully signed by the diocese. So there's not going to be. Any um, I guess I would uh, ask the, uh, the chair of the board of selectmen um, if I haven't seen it signed. Okay. Um, but what, what our committee has been told is yes, um, the town has negotiated. Uh, this price, they've signed a purchase and sales uh, contingent upon the vote of the taxpayers. If the taxpayers choose no, then we don't get the property and we continue to use it. Do we know if there's one signed, Captain or John? John? No. We're, we're, we negotiate, we're, we sign the letter and it's signed, which is the first step. They have a very letter process that the church follows. That, that, I'm sorry. Have, I'm sorry. You will have the purchase and sales um, when we're ready to go. When? We're ready to go to town. Okay. You'll be ready. So this, it's pretty confident there's not going to be a slip through for from the diocese that that town meeting is going to go. Ooh. I, I will, uh, it's not in the presentation, but I think it's important to note that at uh, two meetings ago, uh, the Board of Selectmen had asked that we provide um, a memo um, to them with our vote uh, of um, moving forward with this piece of property on Sanborn Road. We did vote to move forward, however, it was under the um, conditions of the negotiated price, and there were other conditions in there. The memo is actually listed as confidential, and I believe it is sealed non-public. Um, so I, we didn't present it tonight, um, but we did present a memo, a confidential memo, to the Board of Selectmen um, stating our intent, our wishes. We were not ready to move forward and, and just say, yeah, go ahead. There's, um, there's Those points are uh, in that memo uh, with some of our concerns, and most of the concerns have all been as far as we know. Uh, we good to move on from that one? The second warrant uh, for $267,000 is the purpose of uh, developing an architectural and engineering design uh, which will be stamped plans uh, for a new police station. Uh, this, uh, this is, this is a, it needs to be in a separate warrant as far as I understand, uh, just due to the fact that it can't be in with the land purchase. It's, uh, um, I'll, I'll talk about the bond here in a minute, but go ahead, Bill. Well, uh, uh, like on this case, did you guys talk about how much bigger you think the police department will, the town will need in the future? I we, mean, you know, the town's did. pretty small. Yes. Yeah. Um, we, we did. We did, and you know what uh, we keep discussing every time the plans come to the table is the fact that the previous uh, committees have all worked on architectural design and what it should be. They've worked with the police department. As a matter of fact, one of the chairs of the police station building committee was Captain Wellington, who worked inside the building. He worked inside this building uh, for probably right. more of his career <laughs> um, in the, down in the, uh, the smaller offices. Uh, but they had uh, brought plans to the table, and we looked at it and said, you know, uh, th they've done a lot of good work on that. It is our intention to look at it, but. Uh, those plans are there, and uh, bringing uh, a plan for an updated facility to build for the future and not just for the next five years. Right, I mean, uh, but I, that seems like a big piece of land, and I'm just thinking, I really like that location mm -hmm. as a central location, and uh, I would think maybe the fire department well, would have... Well, we, we, we kicked that around too, yeah. Bill, and some of the things that came up were looking at what did we really need? We knew what the constraints were at Business Park Drive, is how could we stuff a police department into those particular sizes? And everything was in this two acre, two acre, two acre. So when we saw this come across for the better part, close to five, we said, you know what? <clears throat> Additional parking if needed, 
an addition if needed, an impound yard on site if needed, not down at the town garage. Um, what are the add-on things? And then, you know, some of us visited other PDs and say, you know, what's their footprint look like? And do they have any extra space to stretch on And that's, we, we had a lot of those type of side conversations that really weren't in our mission or in our assignment. Um, because, you know, I'm here for the long haul. I only want to do this once for, for my kids and grandkids, you know, God forbid. But it, that, that's kind of what we, what we thought. And then, you know, present climate in the fire district that, you know what? Wouldn't hurt to be have the ability to park a couple of fire trucks there, where seventy percent of the district call volume and seventy percent of our fire budget happens to be in that. I mean, that directation just seems you know perfect. And well, years ago they were looking in that area too, and that seemed to be the place. Well, that was the other, as we know, the other studies that were done for a public safety building, right. and whether it's fire station or whatever it is, you know, a lot of the studies kept pointing back to that same area. Right. The other two properties, the, the second property and the third property on our list, were both, all, they were also on San Juan Road. Okay. Um, and they, they, we could see, we could forecast that they were going to be difficult to negotiate. And we just, this one just seemed too good to be true for us. No, I, I, and I'm just saying that it'd be great if possibility to include, you know, the more resources for that area, which would, would be the fire department. Or, because it, I know it, this it, downtown is, is an issue too. We talked about all of the possibilities. I, I'd like to um, say that we, I, I'm going to say that we focus heavily on the fact that that's a recreational facility right now, and that's important to us. Mm -hmm. uh, and we talked to, to Gary Goudreau about if we were to place a police facility that, that, we're, uh, that we're estimating the size of it, um, is there enough room on that lot to have a police facility, a large enough parking lot, leave the football field? and keep it as a recreational facility? And the answer to that is absolutely yes. And that made us all feel better, the fact that we're not going to be removing a recreational facility. Uh, that, that, that would be somewhat devastating because we worked so hard to, to have that field that's flat ground. That's great. Um, and you know, once we realized that we could do that, we all took a big deep breath and said, OK, there's another you know, top reason that this makes yeah. us a really good lot. The other piece is the fact that um, the that there's no intention to put that uh, property on the tax rolls. I've already mentioned that two or three times. Um, and we don't feel that we're uh, taking viable property that could be, especially at exit 20, uh, you know, you can take a viable piece of property that everyone's hunting for and, and put a business on there and, and charge them, you know, and to have them pay taxes. It's, it's really a, it's a mute issue because they have no intentions in doing that. So uh, that was another win-win for us. And we'll hit some of that in a, in a second. Uh, OK to move on from the warrant? OK. Uh, so for the town meeting, this, will be, this is one of the slides that will certainly be more polished. Uh, but we, we all know that we've grown out of that current facility. Uh, there were PowerPoints that were presented after 2007, 2008 that showed a police facility that was busting at the seams. Some of the feedback that came from that particular PowerPoint was, Hey, we, how about we just clean the place up and reorganize? Well, you know what? They did. They went through there with a you know a modified 5S process and cleaning process, cleaned it up, reorganized more shelves, and um, and we put money into the building so they could make it. But that was 13 years ago. So here we are, and now we're really grown out of the building. So there's major concern for safety. Um, if if you don't mind, I'm going to read from this list, and certainly we could enter this into public record for tonight's meeting if you wish. Uh, but I'll read down through 16 bulleted points uh, that are provided to us. Uh, the booking room and officers are, offices are in the same space. So if you're someone uh, that is in the office area and you have a prisoner who's completely out of control, uh, it's very difficult to be able to do their work in that area. Uh, there's no separate juvenile holding area. Um, and that's, uh, that's actually not acceptable, the fact that uh, the juveniles, am I saying this properly? Absolutely. Yeah, the juveniles um, in that um, public cell holding area, um, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a violation uh, that's noticed uh, by CLIA uh, and other state standards. Um, there's no separate holding uh, cells for males and females. Uh, the full bathroom for prisoners is outside the booking area. So you actually have to take a prisoner and remove them um, from the booking area and bring them through office space to use the restroom. Um, 
civilian staff or victims being interviewed have to pass through the booking room. So if you're a victim that is, has been assaulted uh, in whatever manner, uh, you have to actually pass through the booking room of where the assailant is. Uh, the evidence room is uh, filled to capacity. The office space is too small uh, for, uh, for two employees, and they had uh, many in there. Uh, there's no space for supervisors to meet with employees privately uh, during personnel matters. Uh, no private meeting spaces. Um, they, they busted completely out of the seams for no more uh, storage for uh, record keeping. Um, there are no public bathrooms in the lobby. Uh, visitors have to be escorted through the PD. We've talked about that. Um, it's not handicapped accessible in the lower level area, and that's where this, the town's emergency operations center is actually located, is in the basement, the, the uh, concrete uh, basement. Um, the, you'll see a picture about visitor parking. Um, the dangerous conditions uh, for people pulling in and out of uh, Copeland Drive, we've got an excellent uh, video of that uh, but done by a drone, um, so you'll see it. Uh, so it's, you know, I remember hearing this presentation back uh, around that 2006 time period and thinking, well, the building's too small. Well, now we're talking about more than just the building's <coughs> too small. Uh, you know, Tilton is not that little small quaint community yet. Yeah, our population might say that we're 3,200 people or 3,500 people. Uh, but the fact that the work that these guys are doing, um, you know, a lot of the crimes that are happening are, are recognized statewide and, na and nationwide. So those are the concerns that we've been talking about that just really amplifies the fact that we need to do something different. So uh, the current facility, um, the, we, all, we know where the police station is. Bear with me just for a second if you don't mind. I'm going to um, try to click on this video. We're just going to move that building over there, right? <laughs> yeah, that, that's a great idea. Though. <laughs> that's a shame. <laughs> we'll talk afterwards. <laughs> uh, or not. Eric, you want to jump up there real quick and see if you can get that thing fine? It may be irrelevant. If you can't get it in the first couple of clicks. Uh, we'll give it a couple of seconds. We do have an excellent uh, drone flyover of the Route 3 piece. Uh, we've been talking about access. Uh, the parking lot specifically, you know, they, the town has done an amazing job of um, extending uh, the parking lot. This is new, well I say new, mm -hmm. since it's been built. Uh, this has been expanded um, and then typically on a busy day you'll notice that cars are parked all the way from the stop sign and wrap up around and you can barely fit. Um, cars in and out of driving in that driveway. Um, so that, that can be a problem. Not so much here. Do you want to um, come out of that for a second? And uh, no? Okay, uh, easy enough. So we'll talk about it. So with the Route 3 access, um, <coughs> that's all right, Eric. We'll move on. We don't I'll just, I'll just let it. Uh, the Route 3 access where it's not a controlled intersection. The, the video that uh, was taken, actually, ironically enough, as during the flyover, a school bus was dropping students off on Route 3. But without this being a controlled intersection, we watched a ramp truck that had um, a, an impounded vehicle trying to take a right-hand turn that waited uh, over 10 minutes to try to pull out of there. And uh, you know, you've got that blind um, corner that's over here. And I can't tell you how many times I've driven up Route 3 and seen two or three police cars, you know, coming out Code 3 uh, to respond. And, you know, the cars that are coming around the corner don't even see them. So, um, the, the, the act, we feel that the access for Sanborn Road 
is, is really nice. It dumps onto 132, and then you have a controlled intersection that's maintained by the state, by the way. <laughs> that's, uh, you know, as far as being plowed, and <coughs> we'll always have that access. Yeah. So, I'm sorry? Also, it's, we, we developed an opinion piece that it was our opinion, even though it's not our purview, but this would be something that we would consider selling at some future date to get onto the tax roll. Actually, we found out the, that there's already been a vote right. um, that's been taken that this will be sold. So um, We're covered. Yeah, so we're covered there. And it was our opinion anyway that, listen, sell it. Let's get this back on the tax rolls, and uh, it'll put us in a better spot. So um, I don't know what the estimated uh, value, tax value would be, but that would be nice to, to get it on the tax roll. All right, so moving forward, I'll try to move briskly through these. Uh, you can see the work that they've done as far as the filing cabinets, but uh, yet they're, they're really busting at the seams here. This is the patrol uh, area where the supervisors and the patrol officers work, um, and it's been retrofit uh, several times. Um, this is their, uh, Tim, I think I just saw him twitch actually when I <laughs> put, put this up there. Um, this is the server that's in the basement that has, you know, it's a basement. Um, you know, although it doesn't have standing water problem on the floor, um, it's a basement and it's a bear uh, to try to control the moisture that's in there. And that's actually where their town server is. Tim, do you have any other feedback on that or are you just nod and smile? Uh, no, the, the, um, there is uh, also in that room a uh, sprinkler head uh, just over the electrical panels there. <coughs> <laughs> Uh, you can see that this is the area I was talking about uh, with the cell. Uh, this is actually a retrofit cell area. Uh, I remember back when I was a patrol officer in the late 90s, you, you just uh, shackled them to the bench and there was no cage. So the cages have been built, but it's actually in the uh, area where they walk uh, from the garage out into the, uh, the office area. This is actually the garage door here, I think. Um, so it, it's very cramped and um, somewhat unrealistic. Uh, there, I've heard a, a few questions out there in the street about, you know, why do we, why do we need the Sally Port area? Well, they, they park uh, patrol cars in here, but at the same time, they're putting uh, vehicles in here that are impounded, and uh, it's a small garage area. So if, when you start getting to design, talk about that. Uh, this, is a, it's a, this is a residential garage, if you will, and you can see the, the rust on the doors. This, this door has already been replaced a couple of times. And, um, you know, they've clearly grown out of that space. Um, yeah, this slide's in the wrong spot. That's okay, though, I guess. Uh, we talked about this, 173 properties with 3-4 are centrally located. Uh, the availability of the property, the cost, the lot size, and the viability. We'll make that change. Um, again, uh, for all the right reasons, uh, this property's not on the tax roll, archdiocese, um, recreational land, prime location for law enforcement operations and response uh, being centrally located. Uh, we leaned on the police department, uh, the supervisors of the police department quite heavily on this as far as their response area. And there's, uh, there's also been mapping studies that were done when they put up the, the, uh, the warrant for a public safety building that uh, this was centrally located for our community. Um, Water, sewer, and natural gas right there. We all know that that's going to be the most economical and reliable way for us to provide utilities for that block. Um, this is the moment we've all been waiting for, right? Uh, what's it going to cost me? So uh, in talking to Tim uh, right here at the beginning of the meeting when I got here, uh, on a 20-year bond on $617,000, uh, it's going to affect the tax rate 14 cents. Uh, now, this is just for the property. No, and no. the architectural and engineering. Oh. This is not for the building. That's not what we're asking for. Uh, so it's 14 cents this year. Um, and you can read that as, as well as I can. Uh, and that folks will be uh, pushing pretty heavy on that. Uh, I would say, uh, you know, I'm willing to give uh, 30 bucks uh, of my tax money um, to, uh, to secure this land. Uh, we talked about this. Um, We're expecting that there will be tons of questions about previous work, and uh, we'll, we'll be better prepared for that um, in the presentation as far as frequently asked questions. The bottom line here is the fact that th this really 
as all the stars have aligned, yeah, magnetic north has moved a little bit. I learned that from one. <laughs> but um, th this is a time of calculated opportunity, really. The stars have aligned with the archdiocese. We're looking for a lot for a police department building. They only want to sell to us. Uh, we know we need a police facility. It's been 13 years. Um, that's why we need to do this now. Um, that's my last slide, and certainly I, I, I can answer as many questions as I possibly can. The, the committee is here. Uh, I'd say fire away with as many questions as you possibly have. I, I apologize for that being lengthy, but we felt that it was important. Any questions? No, I don't comment that I really like that area. I just think that's a perfect area for you know any kind of um, safety services for the town. I mean, that is. Exit 20 is where there's a lot of stuff happening anyway, so you're not close. Yeah. Thank you. All right, it was awesome, you guys. Uh, you were considering keeping the football field. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Are you definitely keeping the football field? Or is it just trying? No, I, I mean, nothing's definite, but the fact that we're pushing hard to keep it, and I think it was in the memo that we had to, to the selectmen, was the fact that we've worked with the engineer on the project and uh, he sees no reason why when we do the dirt work, the football field could get moved the other uh, direction, um, but the fact that recreational facilities will stay. There's a little bit of controversy over you know, who uses the field. The high school football team uses uh, their varsity fields at the high school now. Uh, once in a while, they, uh, we, we think they practice there, but we're really not sure, um, but it's not on a regular basis. Um, there are the Pop Warner football team does uh, play there, and in, when, as soon as we started to talk about it, we knew how important it would be to keep it. So um, it's really uh, within our scope and opinion that uh, let's try to utilize that the best we can. Does it mean that 10 years down the road, 15 years down the road, who knows what that time is going to bring? Uh, we, as um, Bill said, uh, it really puts us in a good situation to potentially expand. Um, you know, with the way my brain thinks, I immediately thought, wow, you could land a helicopter in the middle of that field um, for whether it's a medevac helicopter or a police helicopter. Um, and it's going to be at the emergency operations center for the police department building. Um, that's, you know, that's pretty good. You know, as much as uh, they utilize state and federal resources at Tilton Police Department, and they, um, I can remember working one um, drug lab, and that we staged somewhere else off you know, Sanborn Road, and uh, it wasn't at the, you can't stage them at the police department, where this actually puts them at their fingertips where they operate. So, uh, you know, we talked about not, not paving the entire thing, but having gravel out behind. So, uh, th there's tons of conceptual things that we can do, and because it's such a nice lot, it gives us the opportunity to do that. Um, it doesn't put all of our eggs in one basket. I think you're to be commended, thank you. You're very well. Well, commend the committee. It's, well, I still am commanding. Yeah. Not, not you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was going to have birthday cake, but. <laughs> no, I think you've done a wonderful job. Thank you. Kevin, you know, one thing to, that I didn't think that you emphasized the point down enough is time's running out for available space until. Mm -hmm. It's really 10 years from now. All the other spaces that you possibly looked at would be completely impossible to, to locate. And we'd be getting to a point where we would have to buy a commercial building and tear it down in order to do it, which would cost millions. Uh, this price at $350,000. Yeah. 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 I had the key so nice. spot, and I'll, I'll quote Pat Clark called it the sweet spot. <laughs> the sweet spot. Right you said there. that recently? No, uh, years ago. Many times, I don't know if anybody else remembers that, but you know, they, they did the circles around it. And, and right there, when they were talking about behind J. Jill, that that yeah, was that the sweet spot of where the calls were <coughs> and at accessibility. And one of the big things in the past was everybody thought, well, if we're going to be up in the business park out back, what are the police doing up there? You know, they don't play poker and cards. You know, shoot ski out back or something. <laughs> Because we know that's, that's, that's yeah. a big pack line. But this spot, <laughs> you know, there's not going to be another one around for, I, I can't even think anywhere. I rack my brains where there's another spot where you could do this 
it's so accessible for everything, the highway, And it's level, you don't have to worry about it's the perfect law. We, I remember even if being, we don't get the police station, we should have this law because we may not get it this year, but our future and our children may decide, hey, those guys, they should have built it, but at least they reserve the space. Absolutely, and that, that's how we feel, you know, how um, I think it's important to note that um, we feel it's the sweet spot, and uh, I remember, and I mentioned this in one of our meetings, that um, George Hass uh, owned property up on School Street, Sherryland Park, and I remember sitting beside him at the town meeting, he was banging his fist on the table, and he said, you need to remember that if we want commercial property, we can take it in the eminent domain, and I thought, well, that ought to go well, you know, and and I, I listened to what he said, and yeah, we all know that he's right, but who, that, that's very controversial. Um, and to, to have to do that, to take a piece of property that's that we do it. Take well, things off tax rolls. Yeah, and here we are, we're not taking anything off the tax roll. If anything, <coughs> we're going to put property on the tax yeah, roll. Exactly. How often does that happen? Sure. No, that's great. So uh, we could go on and on all night, yeah. I'm sure. Great. Um, if there's something that you'd like to see I've added, I have yeah. a question. I have a question for them that's tied into this. So if it, it looks like there's a lot of nods and smiles and agreement and you know this is over half a million dollars that we're all in, excited about to move forward. And I'm not saying this on behalf of this committee, but I'm saying this on behalf of Jason Wright, the taxpayer. I would encourage you to go back and look at the police budget because I know some folks on the street will be doing that. And when you're talking about adding a position in a budget year where we're trying to do a land and a building thing. Um, I just came off the fire district budget committee and um, at Eric as well as it, it's, it's, you know, seen on the commissioner's side. Um, it's, it's a hot topic when you're trying to build and staff up and, you know, Chief Sitar wanted to add some staff and, um, you know, the rest of the, the district, there's, there's always that building project. So you guys have time to reconsider and make sure you guys had it, you folks had an impact and made sure you did everything you absolutely had to do to the PD budget for operating and staffing because I know it's going to come up and I don't want you guys to have to, you know, to take that bullet and just, just throw it out there. Because so, it looks like a flat budget and a huge increase on the PD line, right? So just, just launching that for you. Is there anything else for us? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. 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 As I mentioned earlier, the, or in my uh, memo to you, the right. So you voted that earlier tonight, but the board of selectmen won't have a chance to change their budget until tomorrow night.
motion that the budget committee approves Article 3. So I recommend. recommend. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to make a motion that the budget committee recommends Article Number 3. Second. Anybody want the draft? <laughs> Does anybody need a draft copy of the Added to the, it could be added to the operating budget. Do a one-time. Uh, yeah, just get it up. The big bond is just string it up. The two hundred and sixty-seven thousand uh, would be um, about would be considerable. Uh, on the tax rate, uh, let's see. Every five thousand dollars is a is a penny. So if you divide, um, so it's going to be about what fifty. Six cents or so, something like that. Well, that look right? what it was for the land. Three point six per thousand the, the, per year. No, no. Well, it's just in the in one the one tax year. rate for one year. For the one, one year. year. It go back then. then it wouldn't, you wouldn't have it the next year. That's right. So, so I bond. can give you the actual. You wouldn't um, have a bond. No. You just do it one year. So my next question would be, um, if we didn't, the, could that be amended on the floor? At town meeting, the method of financing without changing the spirit of the Warren article enough that would make so we could do it. Or I'd have to check um, the the architectural and engineering impact would be 53 cents on the tax rate, so it would be 156 dollars or so for a 300 thousand dollar house, 53 dollars for a hundred thousand dollar house. The uh, land purchase would be 69 cents. Um, on the tax rate, so $69 for a $100,000 house, uh, 138 for 200000 and so on. So, Catherine, you knock your head a little bit on that one. So, okay, let's say we want to do it, and we either want to go and finance it, bond, or, as you're saying, pay for it outright. Could we go and, on the floor, amend this article 
it, it can only be yes or no, or could we amend it to say, well, can we change it from the bond to you, you, you have a 10 percent. Oh, got it. She's well, you have a 10 percent rule. In you have, yeah, you have a 10 percent rule, but what you would do is is get people to vote no on the bond and increase your budget by X amount of dollars. But you have a 10 percent rule, but the um, town meeting can overrule the 10 percent rule. I understand. Uh, not a good thing to do. I'm not so sure about that. I think that's why there is. Okay. No, it can be. Uh, I, I'd have to check with DRA. But you can, um, the, the, the great thing about a bond is, is that it's spread over a number of years, so not just the people who are living here in the first year pay for it. Those people who move in in later years also pay for that uh, public building. Are there penalties that public to pay use. bond off early? Pardon? Uh, it, de it depends on the, the type. The original uh, bond that I discussed with the, that's why the Warren article says bond or notes, because uh, the original uh, financing I discussed with the Board of Selectmen was a five-year note, in which case uh, there usually is not a uh, prepayment penalty on those types of notes. If we go through the New Hampshire Municipal Bond Bank, uh, yeah, there is. So there, it's, it's a different... It, there's a whole bunch of communities that uh, that group uh, debt together to get the best rate. So if we were doing a short-term note, we'd be paying a higher rate, um, you know, not that much higher than the bond bank, but um, but that was my original uh, recommendation to just make it a shorter term, uh, so that you you pay it off more quickly, and um, but you you don't have a huge impact on any given year. What would be the rate? The interest rate, yeah, yeah I can. Um, well, the the fourteen, the 14 cent one. Uh, so that's a twenty year, and I'd have to look it up. Uh, I want to say it was three and a half percent. And the way the rates, the way the rates work is, you know, the shorter term are on the lower end, and as you go out further and further in time, the rates go higher because there's more risk, uh, more risk involved. Um, In hindsight, being 2020, the other thing we could have been doing for the last 13 years is have a land and building fund and throw 50 grand in yep. every year, mm -hmm. and yeah. we wouldn't have this conversation. But we, right. we've yeah. not done that. I mean, That's right. The fire department, fire district, we did it mm -hmm. a few years, throw right. money in here and there. We just we have a developed capital building fund, or yeah. the the detail fund should have could have been set up as a land and building and apparatus fund, yeah. but it wasn't. So here we are. You know. Okay. All right. All right. We have a motion on the board. Any more discussion? All in favor of recommending it? Any 
you all have heard that there's 20 years in there from our supply. Do we have anything in this um, reserve fund now? Yes. Yes. Which re which reserve fund? So you have uh, one of the sheets that I passed out to the budget committee tonight has a listing of all the revolving and capital reserve fund balances. Yeah. And in there, the uh, town roads, bridges, sidewalks, uh, repair and reconstruction capital reserve fund has a balance of one hundred thirty-four thousand nine hundred forty-four dollars. It was, it, was, it was the separate sheet, one of the three that I passed out at the very beginning of your 6 o'clock meeting. And he's, he's looking at um, structuring it in such a way that um, maybe the, the project could be done over the course of two years, I think. So, you know, some in 2019 and some in 20, finishing it up in 2020. And we did a similar project uh, on Ridge Road like that. So the top coat uh, was postponed until uh, the following spring. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. I can go down those. Yeah, so it helps run the binder for a year, and then the or, winter, or, or the winter. Yeah. Any more? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Full. This is the full this time? Yeah, it's seventy-one thousand four dollars to do it. So the capital reserve having ninety-four thousand seventy-one will be paid for out of that. The five million six forty eight five thirty one. Yeah, I have mm -hmm. them right here. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Any second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, and I'm going to bring the public hearing, closing the public hearing, eight o'clock. And I 
I would like to They did last. They did last week. Oh, so they so finished their outstanding. Yeah. The only thing. Um, the only thing would be. Um, That's what I said. They just closed it. They just closed it. Yeah. They didn't even ask. If anybody asked, they said. I just wanted to say that uh, the chief and I had gone through the staffing uh, rough rough numbers, kind of back of the envelope numbers, and uh, there isn't a great deal of savings because of the uh, the promotions that would take place. Okay. So there's about a five thousand dollars savings over what our um, our payroll is now, uh, if everything that he was planning uh, came to fruition. Mm -hmm. The other thing to keep in mind is that um, our, we are going to have about $84,000 of increases in the 2020 budget over 2019 that are kind of built in, one of which, part of which is, uh, you know, for the eighth officer for the full year. And then um, there are also um, uh, the, the uh, school resource officer. Uh, it's the highest paid patrolman right now. 
and two-thirds of that uh, cost is paid for by the school district. But uh, either in, I believe it's in 2020, he's anticipated to come back into the patrol. So uh, we'll be putting a different officer over there. So we'll be getting less revenue and we'll have more expense at that time. Um, so the combination of things, we're looking at about $85,000 automatic increase from 19 to 20 in the police budget, uh, including that eighth officer. So, and I just think it's a lot. I think we need to keep in mind, we're giving them quite a bit, and there's just so much we can do without overspending. We don't want to be a bankrupt town. We don't want to overspend ourselves, and we don't want to be just taxing the crap out of our people either. So. Now, in previous years, we made changes to the budget that after we had a public hearing. Like you have to have another public hearing. But we did not have a public hearing. No. Oh. No, you had a, you had a second hearing. It, it's, it's, it, it, we checked it out. With but, you know, and, and like there was some public input that was given and some amendments had been made to the budget in previous years. But during public hearing, no, she closed it out. Yeah, that's the problem. I think prior to the public hearing, you'd have to make the changes. You're right, and that's why we did anything we did, whether it was um, for the change to the police budget for the prosecutorial, yeah, or cap. What else did we do? There were okay, so perhaps that's what we did. Now we have done the so, no, not so you did all that hand. before. You made all those changes, and then you went into your public hearing, and then you voted on. So if if this doesn't if the change doesn't go through, then we're hoping and then it would be brought up on the floor at town meeting to make some changes. If it does go through, then we would schedule a public hearing. Do we have enough time to schedule a public hearing with giving the proper number of days notice? Yes. If you have another public hearing, we have to have a twenty-five days before town meeting and seven days to post it. So that puts you either next Friday, um, given everything else that's on the schedule, which would be a 15 or the 19. So the, it should be possible. Or you could bring it up on the floor. I think we should still handle it here because we could do a public hearing, we have to do a public hearing. All right, well, any we more discussion then? We have a motion. Um, I still think we should talk about it a little bit more because okay. I really don't think a lot, I don't think we're really understanding how much money we're really spending. I think it's just like okay, yeah, we're spending it, but we're putting on an extra two officers for the one position. Remember that it's well, it's because if you're getting a full time and a part time. That's what you made it up to seem like to me at the public meeting. Because this, unless where is the eighty grand coming from? It's two officers for that one position. I thought two different. No. Shows. No, it's no, one officer. No, it's one officer. It's 80 for one May. officer? Yeah. Oh. It's half a year. It's half a year. Half a year. Oh. And then next year it goes up to the 80s. And next year, 2020, it goes up to the 80s. The whole year. Yeah. Right. That's the building year. And that's the building year. Yeah. And what if is that it? happens? And right. we just spent 350000 That's going on the land. And which is the best investment? Which is the best investment? And then yeah. the engineering sauce. I yeah. just think it's a lot of cost all at once for the police department. And they're half of our budget also. Our finance officer, yeah. Well, I just wanted to restate so it's clear. So, in the operating budget as it exists now that you've already approved, the eighth patrol officer would start in May of 2019 and at an entry level rate. And for that year, for 2019, the budget would be 48988 for that officer. In full year 2020, the cost would be 83443 And it is an identified person, someone that they're uh, trying to recruit. So they know what the health costs are, and uh, they know where they would fit on the salary scale. But it's entry level. That's what I heard. Any more discussion? Any more discussion? All right, a motion is second on the floor. All in favor? Can you repeat the motion? What was the yeah, That's to not fund the eighth To remove the eighth officer. Which is the 48,000? Yeah. 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 All in favor of removing the eighth officer say aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. aye. All right, so we don't have to have another public hearing. Um, 
Next Wednesday, there's a public hearing for the fire district. I would suggest that everybody go. All right, there's a move of what to split the district, I guess. I don't know why not. So I think it would be we prove everybody to show up at that meeting if you possibly can. Where can we get the, where can we get the uh, warrant for us? The warrant, they'll be presented to the district. We have, we have a copy of the petition. Okay. Uh, you have a copy of the petition warrant article? I do. Oh, okay. So that won't be all that. Oh, I got you. Well, the, the people who are, the people who have it, it, it was, it wasn't initiated here. No. It was initiated in Northfield. Yes. <clears throat> so that's she said it's she it's she on Northfield Fire Department. Yeah. But, it, but it's on the fire district warrant. It's on the fire district warrant article. Okay. Yeah, but don't, isn't that public knowledge? It's on their website. It's on their website. I don't know what's on their website, is it? I wouldn't yeah, think well, so. Yeah, just, just got it. Okay. Yeah. I'll check. I don't think it would be on their website. It's something, petition warrant article usually doesn't go on the website, does it? It goes on their warrant. Yeah. And the warrant should warrant. be on there. The warrant should, should be posted. Should be should be on should be on the when they post the, the warrant. Right. Yeah. I think when we have to have ours available. That was the petition warrant article for yes. the Tuesday, so it must have been this day. How long do we have to have ours available to the public before the meeting? The warrant? Yeah. The warrants are up. I guess the Lightning could still it's change the warrant. Right. No, but how long do you just bring it up to the town meeting? That's the first no, time it has to be posted. It has to be posted at what time? How many days? I forget. Sorry. It, it's going to be in your town report, too, so. Uh, Last day for the budget committee to deliver the budget and warrant article recommendations to select persons for posting this February 20th. What's the last day for select and post the warrant? Last day to post the warrant budget form for annual meeting is February 25th. So that's like two weeks or three weeks, three weeks before the meeting? Uh, up the week. Two. Would be not more, at least 15 days, but not more than 60 days. So, it's March 12th. Yeah. So anyway, that the meeting is next Wednesday, the 13th. So you'd have to say, if you want to sign it, you'd have to sign it. You'd have to find out. She said she has one you can here and get it. But I, I can go online and just... Yeah. Okay, and then on the 20th, is a public hearing for the school district, which is the next Wednesday. So our next meeting is gonna be the 27th, okay, before town meeting. And we'll go over everything to make sure everybody understands it, because there's some new people who may not understand the procedure. We can discuss that. So other than that, we're I won't good to go. Make it, I'm working. <laughs> What, 7 o'clock? Huh? You mean you won't be able to make it to town meeting? Right. Yeah. You can't get anybody to work? Well, Bernie, but he's working for the town. I'll, I'll, I'll cover for you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right, right. At least. I'll cover for you. I'll cover for you. Yeah, yeah sure. We'll both cover for you. Yeah, we'll yeah. cover. You can go. You'll be all set. We're going to be all over the last one. Yeah. 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 Second. Oh. All in favor? All in favor? Thank you for all the long hours. I am. Yeah. 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 Yeah.